This is Moonstalker with Dragon Age Origins. Ruby Kuzland is presently at camp with her companions, and she's about ready to set off back to Lothering. Now there's something you need to know about Leliana. Leliana is a very private person, and she also knows that women are her weakness. So she will attempt to if she thinks you're digging too deep, getting too close to her past, and you're a woman character in this game, she will attempt to, oh, what's the word, woo you, and uh, make you love her, or, or feel like you're in a relationship, just to keep you from asking the wrong questions. So be wary of talking to Liliana in camp until after she has admitted being a former bard in her past life. Now, if you're a man, then it's not as important. Though you still have to be careful getting relationship with her. Um, actually, I would say man or woman. Just to be on the safe side. Don't talk to her much, except outside of camp. If you're outside of camp, then she won't be able to seduce you. Indeed. So so, Ruby's going to take Liliana to Lothering to get to know her better. Somewhere more public where Liliana can't use her beguiling wiles upon Ruby. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I, I fell and the darkness drew me in. So it's just a dream. Why say it's a vision? I have had dreams. This was different somehow. When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. Um, did you hear voices? No, not voices. It's not so simple. He spoke directly to my soul, in a language no human tongue can express. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Black devours everything? The Chantry says the Maker has left us. He's still here. I hear him in the wind and the waves. I feel him in the sunlight that warms my skin. I know what the Chantry says about the Maker, and what should I believe? What I feel in my heart, or what others tell me? Believe what feels right to you, Liliana. Thank you. It's nice to find someone who agrees. I know what I know, and no one will ever make that untrue. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Condescending? How so? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, 
The sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry, I think. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? What about your fruit? Is it forbidden? My fruit? I... I... I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. What did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. All right, now you've got to the point in your conversations with Liliana, where she admits to having, to having been a minstrel in her past life. That is not the same as being a bard, so she's only told you part of the truth. Now the hard part is getting her to admit she's a bard. If she has not yet done that, you do not want to get in a romance with her before she has admitted to being a bard, because then she uses her wiles to make you feel awkward about asking you too personal questions like that. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. And that's as far as you can get with her. Now, if you want to, you can hear one of her tales. She usually likes you more if you ask her to tell one of her tales to her. To you, excuse me. You are a traveling minstrel. Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. There was another story I wanted to hear. Wait, no, tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know, and their pride they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Let's just move on. Uh, okay, she didn't particularly like telling that story. All right. Maybe we had to be back at camp or maybe, I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like Ruby enough to enjoy telling stories yet. Anyway, let's see if we get a present for Liliana. Probably not. Well, maybe. Yes, we do. I... That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. Shiny gold ring. Now, Morgan, 
excuse me, you get more benefit out of giving the Golden Rope Necklace to Morgan than to Liliana. And these items are enjoyed by other people, so I'm not going to give those out. Alright, right now she is still neutral. So you're not going to get much out of her, I don't think. We can check. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Nope, nothing new. So let's just move on. All right. We're going to gather the appropriate of party. The We're going to be traveling outside of the Lothering area towards the east, towards the Brazilian forest. And Ruby needs her companions to back her up on this. It could be dangerous. I will take Pookie and Stan. Yes. And Morrigan. Indeed. Okay, Pookie needs to level up. We'll put two into strength and one into constitution. And combat training. The Mubari has undergone rigorous combat training, giving him bonuses to critical chance, attack, and armor. Right. Stand what now? Become indomitable. Oregon. Make everyone's weapons bold. Hmm. Save it here. Remember to save often in Dragon Age Origins. It has a tendency to crash at bad moments. And to the Brazilian outs outskirts. We've had an encounter. Could be a traveling merchant or could be something else. Go to momentum. You can get off my back. And no one's getting out alive. You're gonna regret this. Okay. Party seems to be doing rather well at defending ourselves. Seems like we've come to a stretch of woods that is infested by giant spiders. Oh, fruit. most of Ruby's momentum is being used right now. I mean, excuse me, her stamina is being used for momentum. Momentum is very costly to mana. But, sometimes it's very useful.
Excellent. Make a good screenshot. Got it. Keep mushroom. Queen Spider. We'll throw some dirt in her face. And then backstab. It's your time to die! I am your team! Let us end this! Down. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Sten thinks Ruby's command skills aren't all that good. He's criticizing how long it took to defeat those spiders. Alright, save. And continue. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Stop right there, outsider. The Dalish have camped in this spot. I suggest you go elsewhere, and quickly. Actually, I've been looking for the Dalish. I find that hard to believe. What business could we Dalish possibly have with a group like yours? I'm a Grey Warden. I wish to speak to your leader. A Grey Warden? How do I know you're telling the truth? Do many people go about pretending to be Grey Wardens, do they? No, that's true. Perhaps I shall let the Keeper decide for himself. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Hmm. I see we have guests. Pookie, calm down. And a hound amongst them. As if we haven't had enough problems with such creatures. <laughs> Who are these strangers, Mithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. This one claims to be a Grey Warden and wishes to speak with the clan. I thought it best to leave the decision to you. That was wise of you. Masirinus, Mithra, you may return to your post. Manuvinen, Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zachrian, the keeper of this clan, its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? My name is Ruby, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Manners. From a Shemlin. Interesting. What might be your mission here? Have you come to spread news of the Blight? I had already sensed the corruption spreading in the South. The existence of the Blight is not news to me. I would have taken the clan north by now, had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. So their first reaction to trouble is to flee from it. Curious. I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago, as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us, and though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak, even with all our magic and healing skill. We will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. 
but we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry. Is there no way to help your men? The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that... that would be no trivial task to retrieve. I'm good at non-trivial tasks. Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. I will find this Witherfang for you. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin, allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. I should go. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. Okay, I think we're going to wind it up here. Um, this is Moonstalker at that place for walkthroughs with Ruby Kuzlin, Dragon Age Origins. Thank you very much.